The struggle for the liberation of Namibia from the colonial South African apartheid regime robbed the country of many sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, while they were fighting selflessly for their motherland. Many Namibians gave up their youth and the comfort of their homes to venture into the uncertainty of many battles towards their nation's self-determination. With little and at times inadequate resources, they fought long and bitter battles, but eventually managed to defeat an overwhelmingly superior enemy. 23 years after Namibian independence, some of those heroes and heroines are still with us today to commemorate 26 August, a significant moment in the country's history. One such brave warrior is Major Lamek Ithete, a former plane fighter who selflessly fought for the liberation of his motherland. Yeah, um, Uru Wombaje, the history. It uh, down the 26th of the August, the 1966, the racist regime of South Africa security forces. Roj at the helicopters, born and salt against the base of a Swapo arm and wing. They are at Tunama Onguru Wombashe. This date in the 1966 makes the first clash between members of a Swapo arm and wing under the leadership of Commander Johnny Otto Nankuzu and the South African security forces. This memorial symbolizes the beginning of armed liberation struggle, which culminated in the liberation of Namibia on the 21st March 1990. Nampa caught up with a former freedom fighter at his home state in Okahao of the Omosati region, where he shared with us and his grandchildren his experience and history of the liberation struggle. Independence from the South African regime is the freedom we were fighting for, freedom we started and fought for at Ongolumbashe on the 26th of August 1966. We fought against colonial forces to be free. During the war for the liberation struggle, the colonial forces destroyed our Mahangu fields. There was chaos everywhere. We were beaten up by the colonial forces and some were even killed. Even our livestock was not spared. That time, none of you were born yet. Do you understand that? Do you want to know more about the history? You may go ahead and ask what you would like to know. Where did the war take place, Grandpa? The War of the Liberation struggle started at Ongulumbashe, which is located in the Ukolonkadi area in the Omusati region. Where were your houses? They were here, where we are standing now. Some of us left the village to fight for Namibia's independence. Only women stayed behind to take care of the households. Some of the men went abroad to look for guns so that we can liberate our country. Now we live in peace, herding our cattle. These are the few cattle we are left with and herding them in a peaceful Namibia. Ifete, now 86 years old, said the battle at his former army base at Omorulu Wambashe, where the first shots were exchanged between the plane fighters and the South African security forces was bitter and some of his comrades lost their lives. <laughs> Now we have arrived at the main place which gave birth to Namibia's independence, the place where the war of the liberation struggle started. The place is called Ongulumbashe, where the first shots were fired, the one that saw the dream of Namibia's independence. It was here that we operated from. 
engaging in the first battle for our liberation. This was the office of our secretary, Patrick Lungada Iyambo. When the attack helicopters came, Iyambo was here with Lehabiam Olavi Nambinga. They were having breakfast at the time of the attack. The aircraft approached from this side, while some attacked the base from this side. The first one was shot down by Patrick Mbanja Iyambo. South African infantry troops also arrived to back up the attack. The planned combatants' trenches were this side. The planned combatants ran into different directions. Over here you see these trunks and the remaining pieces of wood of what used to be a big tree was the office of the plan commander Nankudu. This was Kahumba Kandola's office, one of those who led the plan fighters. We were the leaders of this area. Isaac Chome knew this forest very well. He even led the relocation from Otamanzi. The people who died here are Angula Chonyeka, Akapeka and Kashuku, amongst others. I do not know the exact location of the places where they died, however. Some members of the colonial forces also died here. Our soldier, who was on duty, used to climb this tree with his binoculars, looking for potential threats and defending our base from any attack. The trees are old now, but they were big trees. The training of the combatants used to take place that side of the base. He said, with limited weaponry, the freedom fighters gave their all for the freedom currently enjoyed in the land of the brave. This is how the aging veteran remembers the journey of events which took place on the 26th of August, 1966. <laughs> The struggle will be longer and bitter, but I know my people can wage that struggle whatever the cost us. Itete joined the Ovambo People's Organization in 1959 and subsequently became a member of the Swapo Party in 1960. He was a member of the Swapo Executive Committee responsible for the mobilization of the masses in the northern areas. His involvement in political activities led to his expulsion from the Hansa Brewery in 1962. His political activity started off with mobilization, exhorting youngsters to flee the country to prepare for the armed struggle. In carrying out his duties, Itete incurred the wrath of traditional authorities and the police. In spite of this, he remained determined and committed in spreading the gospel of Swapo. His determination was reinforced by the return of the first group of combatants from exile in 1965. It was this group, led by the late commander John Otonankudu, that fought the Battle of Ongulumbashe in 1966. Itete was not at the base when it was attacked on 26 August 1966 as he had travelled to Ondangwa to consult with Andimba Toivo Ya Toivo in the letter brought by Leonard Philemon Shuya, alias Castro, indicating that the Ongulumbashe base was to be attacked on 24 or 25 August 1966. He helped to organize the combatants and went into hiding, where he stayed until his arrest in June 1969 at Otamanzi in the Omusati region. It is true that the battle was bitter. We fought without proper guns, but with the belief that Namibia is ours. We were only equipped with six PPSH submachine guns and six pistols. The youth was on the forefront of this battle. 
this is how the war of the liberation struggle started. When Angola got its independence in 1974, the youth found the way paved by the former president Sam Nuyoma. They went straight into Angola following in his footsteps. They asked for guns to clean up the mess in their motherland. Our grandmothers and grandfathers were killed in 1978 in Kasinga and the Vietnam camps without committing any offence apart from running away from colonialism, he indicated. Kasinga and Vietnam were Swapo camps situated in southern Angola where defenceless Namibians were murdered in cold blood by the South African forces. Itete took the opportunity to praise Nuyoma for carrying them on his back like a strong pillar during the liberation struggle. He provided us with the two submachine guns and the two Tete pistols with the which we lodged the armed liberation struggle on the 26th of August 1966 at Nuyoma is a God-fearing man who works with God. He even introduced the policy of national reconciliation, which means those who sided with the colonial forces only did it because of poverty. They never knew what they were doing. We must praise him, along with his comrade, President Hifikapunye Pohamba. I was the one given the responsibility to introduce Opo in Onkanjera, until now, I carry Swapo on my shoulders, given to me by Nuyoma, Pohamba and Mishaka Muyongo. It is only that Muyongo got cold feet and made a U-turn, he said. I pray that God changes Namibians' way of behaving. We liberated the country, but we still have evil acts such as passion killing and baby dumping. We did not fight for killing, but for peace in our country, he indicated. Itete's two sons never returned from exile as they lost their lives during the liberation struggle. The struggle will be longer and bitter, but I know my people can wage that struggle at whatever the cost us. I am 86 years old now. Our days are over. And I am urging the nation not to give up our land to foreign occupation. Let us stay in unity and love each other, he concluded. Peace and love each other. To carry to Horathanin. Tangi. Not only men played a vital role in Namibia's liberation struggle, but women bravely participated in active battle as well and endured torture for supporting plain combatants inside Namibia. One such woman is Lachia Iyambo, sister of the late legendary and inspirational hero Patrick Israel Iyambo. <laughs> I was detained several times for being a Swapo Party supporter between 1966 and 1972. Some of you are saying women did little during the liberation struggle. As a woman, I endured atrocities at the hands of South African soldiers. I suffered. I recall how I was detained several times just because of supporting the party. I was detained because I was feeding the planned combatants and specifically detained for being Patrick Lunganda Iyambo's sister. They hated Patrick and they were desperately looking for him. While I was being detained by the soldiers, he had to endure hunger and thirst in the forest. We invented a tactic whereby myself or my children would put a stone on top of a specific pole in the field to warn Patrick when I was detained. When the stone was on top of the pole, Lunganda knew he had to immediately go back to the forest because it meant I had been detained. If the stone was on the pole, he could come home. The children were, however, never really told what the true purpose of the stone and pole were. Children being inquisitive by nature, they always questioned Iyambo about the objects and for fear of having the tactic accidentally revealed, I had to make up a story to ensure that they would always remember to put the stone on top of the pole when needed. I warned them that if they do not put the stone on the pole, they will receive my dead body. 
Things got worse when Patrick shot and killed a policeman in 1968. I was detained many times at the Baobab tree at Okahao. At the tree, the South African troops would torture and hang Swapo supporters. The tree was declared a national heritage site by the National Heritage Council of Namibia in September 2011. I recall how electric shocks were used to torture me at the tree. Electrical wires were attached to my fingers and toes with clamps and it was switched on and off. They also tied a rope around my neck, which tied onto a metal hook attached to the tree. Most of the time, we were naked when we hanged from the tree. All this happened just because they could not trace or find my brother Patrick. By that time, Lunganda had been hiding very deep inside the forest, but we devised a method whereby I could find him in order to give him something to eat. Because I did not know exactly where Patrick was located in the forest, when I took food to him, I would start singing a hymn. And when he heard me singing, he would start whistling. That is how we managed to feed him in the forest. We continued to use this method until Lunganda fled into exile in 1972. His absence, however, did not mean Iambo's troubles were over. The torture and atrocities towards me continued. Lunganda was also amongst the group which later engaged the South African Defence Force on 26 August 1966, the day which has since come to be known as Heroes Day. This was when the South African Security Police, led by a Captain Swanepoel and guided by a certain Castoli, attacked the Omolugumbashe military base during a surprise attack using helicopters. It was during this battle that the torch of the armed liberation struggle was lit until the final victory was achieved on 21 March 1990 after a long and protracted war which culminated in the epic battle of Quito Quanavale, ushering in Namibia's independence. Lunganda passed away in Vindek on 25 July 1991, shortly after the country he fought for gained her independence. Reconciliation here at Papua.